So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, I'm super excited because this man has been in every single show that I absolutely love for years and years. So I'm really honored to have him on the show. And he's starting in a brand new show on sci-fi, which we're going to talk about in length because I've seen the first couple of episodes and it's superb. Uh, and I'm talking about the wonderful Canadian actor, Mike, and I'm going to try and pronounce your your name in in the right way because it's Serbian originally. Or it's yes. pronounced Serbian, so it's Dopudge. Uh, Dopudge is the right way Do, to do it. Dopudge. But, <laughs> but we don't use the J or the there's a different letter in the uh, Cyrillic alphabet that yeah. is there. And when my parents defected, they um, basically they said, we don't have that letter, so you want to put a D at the end of it? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. Awesome. That is so awesome. Do, don't and... put, yes. I know. It's, it's a kind of an interesting... Uh, tidbit there you go trivia <laughs> have you ever like gone back and actually researched your family history because it must be quite um quite quite cool to do that because obviously is it yugoslavia that the orig originally yes. from yeah yes. i mean have, have, have you gone back there and obviously met family and have you got family still back there um yes i still have family back there um not much and my my parents you know, my dad's past has been over 20 years now. And, and my mom uh, is in a care home right now. She's got suffering from dementia, but she, to be in touch with the family is sort of a different thing. The way, you know, especially in today's day and age, you could just email or call mm -hmm. or, and it's not a big thing. Whereas back then it was just letters. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do have uh, a cousin of mine, uh, Lillian, that I speak with uh, on a regular basis and uh, she's in, in New Jersey. So, uh, she's the one that keeps me up to date on, on everything that's going on. With them. <laughs> so they've all left and gone over to the states or Canada. So, uh, which is quite nice, I suppose, if you've got all your family around 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 you. But let's talk about the last eighteen months because the last eighteen months have been off the charts. You know, we weren't <laughs> prepared for it. Uh, it's definitely sh shown the nice people and the horrible people in my 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 opinion and it's definitely a, a giant reset button on humanity but over the last 18 months how have you kept going forwards and how have you kept positive throughout all all, all these hard times well like you said it, it was incredibly difficult in, in different ways that i didn't expect mm -hmm. um i think at first was okay well how serious is this like how mm -hmm. how really how sick can we get and then Unfortunately, I did lose some people that I knew and uh, I guess indirectly or directly related to COVID. Uh, so it was tough. And then all of a sudden you realize when it hits home, it, it's it's very real. And uh, probably the hardest part was not being able to do anything, having the family at home, trying to keep everybody entertained, trying to keep the kids, even though my kids are a little older now, they're 12, 12 and uh, 17 it still was a challenge to, you know, and schooling, having to do homeschooling. The whole thing, I, I think it just made you appreciate what we had before a little more. I, I, for me anyways, and look, I hear people complain about the masks and the whole thing. And it's not like everybody's got to wear a mask. It, it is what it is. You can either deal with it or complain about it, make life miserable. So for me, it was just easier to just wear it and deal with it. Mm, and you've got to be part of the solution, not 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 the problem. And, you know, anything that will help or and I think it's more about thinking about other people, not 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 yourself. So so when when people are asking you to wear a mask, it's it's to to be kind and thoughtful of other pe pe people around you, because you don't know if they've got someone at home very vulnerable uh, that if they took that virus home, that could be, you know, you know, bad news. So it's about being considerate and kind to other people. Absolutely. Uh, we had my mother in law was living with us, uh, and she had uh, compromised lungs. So for us, it was the utmost important. And we were very uh, vigilant as far as sanitizing our hands, um, wearing the mask and not going anywhere not going, you know, because we live in a smaller town where a lot of people didn't necessarily adhere to to the rules as much and mm. so we were just extra careful i guess at the end of the day to to make sure we didn't bring that home and we were able to get vaccinated uh that was the number one thing we just couldn't wait to get vaccinated to take that out of the equation as far as i believe in science and i'm gonna put that leave that out there but i believe in science and i care about other people and i think that's the biggest 
that, like, as you said, Brian, um, to come through this, we need to worry about everybody else as well, not just ourselves. Mm. Mm, definitely and those those, those va va vaccinations are there to help and and obviously as i was saying earlier to you that i'm just getting over covid myself so with those vaccinations um you know i can continue making wonderful memories for my girls you know you know what i mean and i can continue life and enjoying life and so i'm very thankful um whoever invented those vaccines i would love to be able to buy them a box of chocolates or you know shake 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 their hands after covid time um and say thank you but let's talk about your wonderful career because literally looking at your imdb i think it's over over 176 credits to your name you, you sir you're a bit like eric roberts like so so busy it's like looking at your credits it's just astonishing that you have the time to do you know anything um you know so what what made you go into acting what made you pursue that career i i think acting was always something i wanted to do i just didn't know it at the time when i was growing up so i think that was the biggest thing uh looking back on my life um i think Acting was always something. Look, sports was my first love. I, I, I really loved playing football and I loved playing hockey. Those were the two things I really wanted to do. But I have to say that uh, watching Mad Max as a mm. child, the original Mad Max with my yeah. brother, and, and then we'd watch Escape from New York and we would have we would rent videos and watch all these amazing action movies and B movies and whatever it was, anything to do with action, that was our, our mm. biggest thing. And and I, I just always, from that day on, I said, I have to be in this world. I'd love to partake in, in these, these crazy post-apocalyptic worlds. And, and so I really enjoyed the whole aspect. I love movies. I've always loved movies. So I think that's really where it started for me. And Mad Mad Max, you can't go wrong. My 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 favorite has got to be the Thund Thunder Dome one with uh, Tina Turner. I just think that that is such a good film. It really is. But I think it started to get ridiculous as the movies went on. But I think that was the trend uh, back then when they did uh, sequels. It was always never better than the original. Um, so at what point did you did you think you know when you were start starting out? Actually, I'm really good at this. You know, and uh, I'm, make, I'm making a success of it. Uh, well, the the jury's still out there about me being very good at this. But ah, get uh, out of it, you are. <laughs> the, um, I I think, you know, the moment that you can actually survive a little bit on, on an acting career is where you realize, well, maybe I am doing okay. Maybe people do get what I do. Um, I think that was the original, but I started later than most people, I would say, as far as actors go. Uh, my football career was cut short with some injuries, then I went in, into hockey and the same thing. So I had, you know, professional careers, but very short careers. And acting was the one thing that that when I tried it and, and really, uh, I remember hearing action for the first time and I felt that rush of energy and anxiety and intensity and, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need to be doing. So that was it. And then from that point on, I remember a casting director once told me, he said, you're an actor the day you believe you're an actor. Doesn't matter how many things you've done, doesn't matter what you've done. And I thought, okay, that's really interesting. So I said, okay, I quit everything. And I said, I'm an actor and <laughs> went full bore, went into it full bore. And the rest is his history. And I've got to say, acting is probably one of the most hardest professions because we just see you simply on screen doing your magic. But there are plenty of up, up, ups and downs and a lot of rejection. I mean, how have you coped with that? And what technique do you use to cope with the rejection and the ups and downs? Uh, lots of tequila. <laughs> no, I'm uh, tequila does play a part every once in a while. But uh, look, there are always roles, even to this day. There, there's a few things right now that I'm waiting to find out about. I, I know if, if it doesn't go my way, it, I'll be crushed for a couple of days. And I, I realize that that's what it is. Yes, let it affect you. It, it, the rejection, you get rejected so much. And a lot of times you just deal with it and bothers you for a couple of hours. And then you say, okay, whatever, move on. I've got to find something else. Um, being busy is always a great thing as far as coping with all the rejection. And it is a crazy industry, what we do. Um, you know, who's to say this actor is better than that actor, than better than that actor? Basically, it's all the flavors that you like. And mm. there are some great actors that maybe aren't, I'm not necessarily that fond of. However, they are good. 
So, you, you know, your hands you have nothing to do with how people choose uh, these roles for you. So you just got to stay in the game. It's a marathon and just keep doing it. And do you think it's uh, been in the right place at the right time a lot, a, lot, a lot of the time, especially, you know, when you mention about these actors out there, you get some great ones that are in these indie movies and and they're not really high profile but you get some high profile actors which i'm not going to men- mention who who are mm, mediocre i mean do you think it is the right place at the right right time some some sometimes absolutely uh i think that's the biggest thing and i think also your your celebrity status or popularity status ha- it plays a big part in it and and I know that, and I've, I've met producers and spoken, gotten to know a lot of producers over the years, and they flat out tell me, yeah, if, if you're more of a celebrity, you can be a great actor, but if your name isn't out there as much as some of these other actors, then unfortunately at times you will lose that role, but not all the time. I, I, directors fight for actors all the time. You hear that. And studios are tough, and and I understand too, because they have money to make. And if they can guarantee that this certain actor, actor A, is going to provide, you know, uh, give them this much money, then I understand why they take them. But at the end of the day, I think you just really got to hope that everything lines up and and everybody agrees with you, which doesn't happen often. (laughs) And obviously the industry can be uh, quite up and down in the way of security. I mean, have you got a backup plan in case, say, you, you decided all of a sudden, do you know what? this isn't for me. I can't be doing with the stress. I mean, have you got a backup plan or is that jinxing, you know, the whole career? My original thought as a starting out as an actor would say, make sure you have a backup plan because you know, you never know. It's such a crazy industry. It's so tough to make it, but really I don't have a backup plan. I, I, I really think I'll deal with that uh, when it comes. Um, I've tried to be okay and, and smart with my money, I guess it, and uh, made some investments and things are okay. But really, you're still, you know, for me, it's still hard at times to sit there and wait for a yes. Oh, yes, I got the role or I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the hardest part of, of being an actor because we all love working so much. Like, I love being on set. I, I truly do. I love being on set. So I love working. I, whatever character is always fine. As long as the people are nice, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So... Mm-hmm. For me, yeah, and it's not always it's not always great, but uh, but I've always enjoyed myself on set, regardless. That's good to hear. Good to hear. And uh, you know, as the industry changed over the years, because we hear so many stories um, about you know horrid directors and and production conditions. I mean, as the industry changed for the, for for actors in the way of diversity and and the way that the actors are treated. Yes, absolutely. I, I think everything is changing for the better. Um, mm. I remember starting out and, and doing shows and, and being on set for 16, 18 hours. And very rare does that happen now. Um, I don't think I've done a 16 or 18 hour day in a long time. And I'm just talking camera you know, hours, I'm not talking about getting home and all that other stuff. So um, I think it's gotten better that way. Diversity is definitely something that... Um, you just know from the breakdowns that you get from for different roles that what they're looking for. And I think it's great. Uh, at the end of the day, I think we need that because that's what the world is about. Exactly. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I, I think, yes, I, I think the industry is safer now. There still needs a, a lot of room for improvement. Um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I don't mean to jump ahead, but with what happened with Helena on, on the mm-hmm. film show Russ, I just never would have thought that would happen in today's day and age, to be honest with you. I just mm-hmm. think it, it was such a terrible thing that happened and I don't understand why it happened. There's no way it mm-hmm. should have happened. Mm, yeah. And of course yeah, let's, no, let's, let's, let, let, let's talk quick, quick, quickly on, on, on that. So you're talking about obviously the production of Russ with Alec Baldwin that's been in yeah. the, 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 the news and, it was quite shocking because, you know, that is some something we, we haven't heard for many years, uh, you know, not since Brand, Brandon Lee with The Crow, uh, with the, in, the in, in, incident there. Um, I mean, you've used a lot of guns on set. I mean, from your point of view as an actor, I mean, what safety protocols are there currently? And do you feel safe as an actor, you know, handling weapons? Absolutely. Um 
I've been very fortunate with the crews that I've worked with that everybody has been a, a professional and really understands weapons and understands this and very safe. Like I, I remember extras. I remember an actor almost getting fired because he was holding his gun a certain way and waving it around, even though it was empty and there were no blanks in there. There were specific rules as far as you never point a gun at somebody. You never, it's not a toy. Mm. And and I've been on sets where, where actors were almost fired and, and background people or stunt people were fired because they, you know, it just happened a few times. But I know are the crews in Vancouver, I've been fortunate I've worked all over. Uh, I've never had an issue with the crews in New York, anywhere in L.A. Uh, and I've worked probably the most with the crews in Vancouver. And I think um, the armors in Vancouver are top notch. They mm. are extremely safe. And when they speak everybody listens, including the director, producers, they can stop. They, they, they're they one of the few people that can actually stop the show or stop the scene if things aren't going well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? I just feel for uh, uh, Alec because there's, there's a lot of press going around uh, saying now that it was a live bullet that was actually in there. It was, it, it, it was actually a lead bullet that was in that gun. And, you know, there's a lot of pe pe people out, out, out there saying that, you know, Alex should be held responsible for it and, and, and stuff like that. And it's shocking to, to be in that position of that actor, having that trust in the armourer, uh, as well as the assistant director as well, because from all accounts, the gun was given to him and, cold, and, and called a cold gun. So I presume that means that there's nothing in there. But I just hope, I mean, do you, do you, do you feel, you know, this tragedy is going to change the industry, um, it, it, you know, going forwards? Absolutely. And it it should change because it just goes to show you that. And look, there wasn't just one person that's at fault here. It starts from the top down. And, and I will say this, and the producers were really trying to find a cheaper way to do stuff and didn't care about safety. And I've been on sets where I, I've seen that happen. And luckily, I was able to put my foot down and things were, were changed. Um, Alec, I, I don't know. I don't know the whole story, so I hate saying it. But mm. how do you, in rehearsal, point a gun at somebody and shoot and fire? First off, you never put your your finger on the trigger unless you're firing. Um, I've just I've never seen that before, so I don't know what and, and why the DP and why didn't the DP if they were setting up? Why didn't they have? Why didn't Hallie have her her uh, uh, Lexan glass like they always mm. have in front of the cameras? Um, if you're firing towards the camera, then it should. I, I just don't understand. I wasn't there, so I really can't say a lot, but so many things went wrong from, from the producers to uh, the armors to, to the AD. The armors is the last line of defense. Actually, we are as actors, but usually they, they show you, right? Every time I've ever been on a show, they show me that the gun is clear and safe. Mm. They always show me that the gun is clear and safe if we're rehearsing or whatever. And then when we actually shoot, they tell you, okay, we're loading the weapon. It's the gun is hot. Mike is hot. And everybody's got to stay away from me. Right. Mm. That's the way I've always done it and the way I've seen it. So I'm just perplexed as to what happened. And, and I feel so bad for Helena and her family, her husband, mm. and it's just terrible. Mm. I mean, I've been I've 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 heard as well. I think John John Snyder said sometimes on set they they would dry shoot the gun towards the ground yeah um you know just 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 to make to make sure but it's such a a tragic thing to happen and and you know ho hopefully things will change i mean we see cgi and stuff like, like like that do we need live rounds do we need i mean C cgi can do wonderful things um but um i, I will, suppose i will add brian i will add one thing to that and yep. and uh, i know a lot of actors especially uh actors that have been around for a little while. There is one thing that I, I love about holding a weapon if I'm playing on the show. If I like to feel the heaviness of the gun. And when you fire the weapon in the blank and you you feel it, you feel it go, it really adds to it. Where with some of the special effects, you don't get as much as that. But again, mm -hmm. if that's the difference between saving a life or not, then let's let's leave the blanks out of it and let's just go with the special effects. Yeah, and obviously speculation, I suppose, not all the facts are out there yet. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd urge everyone to not over speculate and, and make assumptions. And and for all the I mean, I'm 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 sad to say that there are people out there making jokes already about the situation on social media. 
and I think these people need to to go away, have a long, hard think about themselves as human beings, and realise that you know it was people's lives uh, that was affect, affected. But um, but fing, fing, fingers crossed, it will change, and and the industry will get that that bit safer uh, for you and so. um, for the crew. But but anyway, so let's talk about um, something amazing coming to sci-fi because uh, we're down to episode two at the moment. This is uh, Sci-Fi's Day of the Dead, which is an awesome series, and I have enjoyed it from the first to the second episode, and I can't wait for the third. If you could tell uh, the viewers, the lovely viewers and the listeners, uh, who you play and a bit about the show. Uh, well, um, Day of the Dead is... is it's a zombie TV series. Let's not forget about that, right? Everybody is like, well, really? Well, there's no secret. It's about zombies. Um, but I think it's part love story, and I'll get to that in, in a second. But uh, well, it's basically a, a town, how a small, sleepy town called Ma Mawenhaken, uh handles uh, the dead rising. And, and you see, what's interesting about it is how you see how people cope with it, how the different people, some people get selfish, like what we've been through with the pandemic. You'll see some people get selfish. Some people only care about themselves. Other people, you know, come together and work together as a team. And so I think that's going to be, the, it's quite the journey and quite the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun to watch and all the gory. It's got everything, everything you need from a zombie movie, from a zombie mm -hmm. series. And and it's a definite nod to George Romero's um, legacy. And I want to urge everyone that when you watch this for the first time, go in, go into it with with an open mind because this show is different. It's funny. It's got great special effects, st great storylines, and it's just awesome. Uh, and I'm all, all, already hooked. I mean, what was your first impression of the script when it came across your path? Oh, I, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, zombie movie, I was like, okay, I don't know, do I want to be part of this this zombie world? Um, and I read the script and I thought, oh my God, this is so witty, so smart. And I, I really enjoyed the script. And that was probably the main reason why I ended up doing this. And uh, as far as Detective McDermott, the character I play, I, I just love his journey and what he has to go through. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but he, he was bit at one point. In, in the first episode. So um, I really think that it, it's an incredible journey uh, that McDermott goes through. And, and I think the series itself is, is just a fun watch. It, it's mm. got witty writing, the scripts are great, and uh, the acting is really good. And the special effects, the guys uh, did such an amazing job. And we had such an ambitious shooting schedule, so I really commend uh, the whole crew. They were amazing. And how did you approach the, the the role of Detective McDermott? Because, I mean, how 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 do you approach like a role in 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 general? And how did you approach the role for the detective? Uh, that's a great question. I I usually tend to try and do some research at some point with the role, but with Detective McDermott, I, I just realized I've seen people like that. Look, he lost his wife he's he's in this this really sad state and just can't get out of it and he's losing his son the relationship is is, is terrible at this point point. and so instead of always you know fighting for it i think he's just sort of given up and i think at this point uh mcdermott has given up on life and just going through the motions doesn't know how to deal with anything doesn't believe you know if life is it's supposed to be good then why would they take my wife away so i think it's he's having troubles <laughs> big trouble dealing with all of that and how much of the character is you and how much of the character is McDermott? I mean, how, how, how much of yourself do you put into the characters? Well, you have to, you know what? It, it's almost, it's a lot of you. I, I think it's, it's a variation of you. Can I say that Brian? For me, uh, a lot of times I try to put everything I am. Look, I've played cannibals, murderers, drug dealers, and I'm none of that, none of those. Um, but I just put myself, I infuse myself into the characters. And I, I think you need to, or else it does, it's not real. It doesn't feel as real. And I, and I think when you infuse yourself into the characters, it, it becomes more complex. So it's, yeah, I tried to. And with McDermott, I did a little bit of that as well. Awesome. Uh, I've got to say, you're my third guest from the show on, on, on my, my, my show. So I've already third. Had... third, yes. <laughs> 
third guest uh, this week, literally back to back. I've been getting them all in. So I've had Chris Christopher Russell. I've had Natalie on on the show as well that plays plays Lauren. And um, you know, for your character, without you know releasing any spoilers, what can you say? You know, we've got to look forward to for McDermott coming. You know, com, com, coming on to the you know episode three, four, five, six, seven. I mean. Are you allowed to say, or is it a case of? You know, I, I can wait? say. I think I can say. I, I think I can say some. Yeah, I'll say some things. Um, what I mentioned before was a bit of a love story. Is is basically it's it's McDermott as far as his storyline goes. He's trying to find his son again and trying to uh, to to make things better. And I think that journey throughout all these episodes. I mean, the way it goes, the way it happens, it's it's really a roundabout way. But I, I think when you watch the last episode and when you see the last couple scenes you it, it'll all make sense to you um <laughs> i can't wait i really can't i really can't it's such a good show i mean you filmed during the pandemic as well i mean what 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 was it like filming under such strict you know conditions very difficult um and look, I couldn't wait to get, and when this came up right after, the, well, during the pandemic, and it was the first time we were allowed to work, and I just was, I had to be on set, I wanted to work, I was going crazy, um, and then I realized, wow, the, okay, scripts are great, I'm glad this opportunity happened, let's get there, and then you get to set, and then you've got to wear the masks, and, and the visors, and all these safety protocols, get tested every couple of days, and you're sitting there going, well, okay, this is not fun. But once you realize, if this is all I have to do, really to get tested and, and to wear a mask and to do all these other little things that, that weren't there before. If that's all I have to do to, to work, then I'll do it. I'm fine mm. with it. Mm. And we were I mean, safe what's... and the, the protocols were great. Everybody was um, very respectful of each other because we didn't want to get shut down. We didn't want to get COVID. We didn't want, we want to keep working. So I think everybody just really, really abided by the rules and, and I think that's why I worked out well. Look, you can't stop it the whole time. And we did have a couple a couple of episodes where we had some crew and, and some, uh, I don't think any cast tested positive, but I know we had some crew test positive and then we, we had to shut down for a couple of days. Mm. I mean, I've got to say, during the height of the pan, pan, pandemic, it did, 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 did worry quite a few people because, you know, Ooh. we were thinking, you know, about content coming through, you know, if no one's filming... You know, you know, we're going to have stuff on on repeat, but but it's really nice to, to because I've got quite quite a few friends that are in the theatre on the west I, where, yes. where west end, and and it, and it's really nice for them to get back to work as well. So I'm I'm really pleased that you know even under strict conditions, you know we are getting this you know awesome show, and you can't really tell that obviously it was recorded under you know strict conditions so it's that's i suppose movie magic as they say uh, i mean what's been your favorite scene to shoot so far on the show or would that be giving stuff away uh it would be um there are a few scenes I i'll i'll go with this way i think um look if, there's so many different storylines and there's a storyline with mcdermott and you'll see in, in in tonight's episode i believe um where he's you know apparently at a hospital and now now the journey of mcdermott <laughs> it, it, it gets pretty crazy at this point but having said that um I, I think my favorite scene was the last episode a scene with uh keenan that i did um i don't want to lead on too much to that because it, it's a it's a big story point uh that one's great and then i love his his scenes with uh with when uh he's getting introduced uh, to Dr. Logan. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll... episode episode three, hopefully people would have seen it when they've seen this because this gets released yeah. on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, don't worry, worry about spoilers from, from, from that. But, uh, but now I really, really look forward to that. I can I cannot wait. Um, and you know what? I'm just lost where I am with the question. So it's great. This isn't live because I can edit, edit, edit it because, I was just in. I, I was lost in what you were saying. Um, oh, that great! Was it. <laughs> or not falling so, asleep. I hope. <laughs> no, no, no. So, um, you know, throughout this show, did you keep any mementos, anything from the show, or have you kept anything from any of your other hundred and seventy-six, you know, projects? I mean, do you collect uh, props and costumes? What do I have? I, I, I don't, for the most part. 
Um, what do I have? I don't have anything from Day of the Dead, to be honest with you. Nothing at all. And you'll know why, because once everything started, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore. So obviously you don't want any of that. Stuff. <laughs> um, now on the show Power that I did uh, for the Stars Network, I do have some of my uh, suits and and uh, Tom Ford jackets, and I was able to uh, to collect those. So I was very fortunate in that regard. Um, and every once in a while, some shows I do get to keep, but that's the most recent. We're on power. I was able to get my Tom Ford jackets and and, <laughs> and two great suits that I, I couldn't believe. And obviously, for uh, nowhere near what the price would be uh, to buy yeah, it off the rack. It's strange you saying that because um, I was in interviewing Anna Hopkins uh, that was um, in Bad Blood with Kim Kim Coates, and she said that yeah. she 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 got a whole wardrobe because it was all designer stuff, and she got it at a fraction of the cost. Um, yeah. So she's she's she, she she's got all her clothes as well. So I suppose that that is another perk of being on a show and being being, being an actor like like yourself. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, you know why? What helps is because they they tailor it to you. So mm. it won't fit everybody. It won't, it won't just fit everybody you have. So once that's happened, then obviously it's been tailored and manipulated, so to speak. So all of a sudden it's not worth what it was. But to me it is because it still it fits me perfectly. So mm. so uh, Day of the Dead um, is on every Friday uh, on sci- Sci-Fi. So I've got to remind everyone to check it out. It's an awesome show. But looking at how busy you are on IMDb, how do you unwind? What do you do to relax and to actually chill out and, you know, center yourself? Well, the people that know me, my close friends, and everybody knows I'm a family guy. Um, I love being with my family. I choose that over anything else. Uh, so for me, and I'm always involved in my kids uh, as far as they, they're athletes. They like to play sports. They're playing, my, my son's playing basketball and, and my daughter's playing volleyball and soccer right now. Um, so I'm always involved to some, I, I like watching their games their practices. I go to everything as much as I can, although we couldn't for a little while because of the, the pandemic, but, uh, the restrictions that we had here, but, uh, I love being with my family. Um, I also like to work out and play hockey. I still play, uh, recreational hockey. So for me, that's a great release. Mm. And, uh, I've got to say, is that a Canadian tradition then that everyone's got to play hockey at some point? Absolutely. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, and you know, look, I, I know a lot of people that don't play hockey, but for me growing up, my brother was, we played, um, it's just part of who I am. So yeah, I have to play hockey. If I don't play for a while, I start getting antsy and, and look, the, the, the hockey we play now is not with the full contact and the hitting. It's, it's a, a little less physical. We'll leave it at that. Mm. I mean, I went to go and see a live game in Washington. I watched the, uh, mm-hmm the Washington Capitals against the Maple Leafs. Yes. Um, and I was quite disappointed because there was no fighting. There was no throwing gloves off. And, you know, it was all because apparently if it's very close, the score is very close. They don't tend to mis- misbehave. But if one team is losing by quite a mar- margin, they sort of then mis- misbehave. And But it was quite quite a close, close game. So they get I was frustrated, a... right? They get, yeah. you get upset, frustrated, and somebody hits you the wrong way and... and... Yeah, you you don't have the willpower to say no. You just like hit them back, and, and especially when <laughs> I, mean, I was I, playing, there was a lot more fighting when I played. So I know I was going to say it's quite quite a tough sport. You see these players from hockey, uh, like the enforcers, where they've got hardly half an ear and and they've got no teeth, and and literally their nose is like the other the other way. But um, they're doing it with a smile. So. Uh, that is definitely not a sport for me. I think that's too much contact for me. And plus, I can't ice skate. I'll keep falling over. Um, so looking at your IMDB, uh, I always look at people's trivia. And you've, you've got an awesome piece of trivia on there, which is you've starred in all three sections of St- Stargate. So that's Stargate Universe, yes. Stargate Atlantis, with a lo- lovely dual, dual state who's been on the show as well, uh, and uh, SG-1. So that is an awesome fact. Um, I mean, what was it like being on all three? I mean, it's like playing bingo, isn't it? I mean, you've like literally done all three, which is awesome. Yeah, and, and amazing. And thankfully, they, they kept bringing me back, which uh, <laughs> I was very grateful for. Look, I, I really enjoy my time on, on all three Stargate franchises. And originally, I was 
they didn't know I was an actor. They knew me as a stuntman. So, um, but I was doing plays and, and, and doing my acting career on it, but I never mentioned it when, when I'm there as a stunt guy, I don't say I'm an actor too. And I just do my, my job. I, I show up, do my job. And then one of the producers um, saw, saw me in a play and said, wait a second. I didn't know you were an actor. And then they had me audition for a couple of things. And all of a sudden I, I got booked. So I was very fortunate in that regard. And, um, and then that just led on to other ones. And then I became good friends with Joseph Malazzi, who, uh, you know, they brought me on Stargate Atlantis and that worked out well. And here's a bit of trivia that I believe, if I remember correctly, that there was a, a very big potential of me coming back and recurring, but the show ended up getting canceled um, at the time. So there was going to be a, a nice storyline with as a runner as with Jason Momoa's character, which was which was uh, would have been great. Um, but then thankfully, Stargate SGU came out and if, originally they... I'd read for a couple of the roles um, for the pilot, but then they said, MGM said, no, he can't be in it because he's done too many Stargates. And then <laughs> came full circle at the end of the season. They called me and said, what do you think about playing this this other role? And um, <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm in. So looking at your IMDB, I want to spice it up a bit. So a few just quick random questions before we wrap up this wonderful interview um, to, may, to maybe give the fans a bit more insight in, in, into what makes you tick. Um, so um, the first one, uh, working with so many awesome actors, have you ever been starstruck? Have I ever been starstruck? Uh, yes. Yeah. And it, it came in a roundabout way. Um, I was doing a movie called White Noise with Michael Keaton. And I remember, you know, oh, this is cool. Michael Keaton, Batman. But we were sort of told not to talk about Batman and, you know, uh, for whatever <laughs> reason. Um, but I said, OK, that's fine. And and then we were working on a scene. We had to rewrite a scene because our location changed. So Michael and I were, were just talking about it, trying to get it working together. So here we are talking. And I walk away and one of the producers uh, walks up to me, goes, look at you just hanging, working on scenes, working with uh, Michael Keaton. Isn't that all? And, I, and then all of a sudden they hit me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm working with Michael Keaton. <gasps> and then I started looking at him and a couple of times I'm like, oh, oh boy, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> it's Michael Keaton. Oh my God, I'm working with Michael Keaton. Okay, say the line, say the line. <laughs> you know, all this yeah. noise in my head. So it's pretty funny. But yeah, I think Michael Keaton was the one where all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, I'm actually working with a star, Michael Keaton. Mm. Um, and I can't believe you he, couldn't mention anything about Batman or go up to him and, and say I'm yeah, Batman. Yeah, or... it was sort of, there was like a memo said, please don't bring that up. I guess he's answered it so many times and if say, I loved you and Batman. And I think, I think they had a bad breakup at the time. So mm. I guess it was better just left un unsaid and not, not talked mm. about, but. But I he mean, was great. I mean, I mean, did he, did he, um, you know, sort of, because the thing is, fans need to realize these actors like yourself, would, you, you, you're just like normal people. You know, you've just got an amazing job. You do it fantastic. And we adore every piece of work that you do. But I suppose, you know, you know, fan encounters, talking about fan encounters, what's the most obscure fan encounter you've ever had at a convention or, when 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 you've been out and about um there's a few <laughs> a few interesting things that have happened um look with social media some, some of the fans and people start <laughs> you know they're they're very brave and uh, they're, they're they'll say all kinds of things to you um having said that there's been times where i've met some of these fans uh that have said you know either not necessarily mean things but were or or, or racy things but just uh very opinionated comments and and then you meet them and all of a sudden they're they're like shaking and and they're totally they're a shell of the person that you thought they would be because of the comments <laughs> that they uh, so you, all of a sudden you're like no it's okay here hi nice to meet you it's okay let's shake hands we're good um and then i had one really interesting one was in i was doing a movie called uh, virtual Re revolution in in paris and literally, I was walking down the street. I was going to meet Jane Badler for for a happy hour drink, and she was she was wrapped and she was leaving that night. So I, I was going to meet with her to have a drink because I'd been so busy on the show. And walking down the street, going to this hotel, this car pulls up beside me, and they had like my headshots, and they had uh, 
like different from different shows that I'd done, like Stargate, a lot of sci-fi stuff. And they were asking me for my autograph. But I never in a million years would have expected that in Paris, of all places, that there would be sci-fi fans that wanted my signature on something. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, who? I mean, what? What? What part do you get recognised for the most? I mean, when you go to conventions, what do you think you get sort of asked for the most in the way of signing? Um, originally, I haven't. Well, pre-pandemic, I haven't been doing conventions. Um, well, when we had our, our children and stuff, I didn't want to be away on the weekends. I wanted to be at home and mm. stuff. But uh, originally, one the ones I went out for was probably Stargate. SGU was probably uh, and and yeah all all the Stargates that seems to be the one where where people know me from um, mm. the most uh, yeah definitely and, and Battlestar Galactica oh yeah of course yeah um, Caprica as well um, so I mean talking about fans how can fans follow you uh, on social media of course not in person because that's weird um, so how 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 can they follow you on social media um, at Dopid Mike uh on instagram and at dope with mike on twitter those are the two things awesome. i'm on and are you on cameo are you one of these stars yeah, oh yes on cameo? yes yes awesome awesome i am on cameo. don't forget do cameo. <laughs> yeah yeah cameo i mean uh yeah. who who did i have the other day um it was the girl that did the hairspray the movie and uh, Nikki uh, Blonsky, and she was saying that, that the people send her really random things on Cameo, like breaking up with their partner and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, do you get weird things or are they all just really nice? Most of them have been, uh, would love, you know, if you could say happy birthday to my wife or uh, happy birthday to my buddies or say that we're the best Battlestar Galactica fans. I was the, la the latest one. Um, yeah, usually it's, it's been normal. I haven't had too many crazy. Oh, um, what was one? They wanted me to eat. I can't remember now what it, what it was, but it, I had to eat something and say how great it was. And, and, oh, wow. and, but just not, it wasn't an ad for them. It was just one of their lines that they use after every show. They say something and, and oh, I can't remember it offhand right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, we'll have to keep one. a lookout of that. We'll have to keep, yeah. keep, keep a lookout. You never know. That video might surface on uh, social media, but Mike, you've been a great guest. Um, Thank you so much for giving me the time and I cannot wait for future episodes of Day of the Dead. Um, and yeah, look after yourself, keep safe and uh, all the best to the family. Likewise, Brian. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This was fun. <laughs>